Yeah. Uh, somebody just check. Yeah. We actually both go like John. We put John in the
two things that the average and the public is that they want to be here and not so I have to do it. But right now, all I'm doing with the is I show the QR code that I get from you guys. And with NHT, I have the second thing. And therefore, I also have like a, a second. It's optional. It's actually. It's a very good issue. With NXI, it's a public key. submissions for this. Uh, we're going to be judging this based on an overall best project as well as individually create guys. So there'll be a total of four winners. Um, the best project will be getting an iPad. Um, the remaining three we have yet to determine which prize we'll be distributing and there's a chance some of the teams themselves will give you some swag and stuff like that. But um, why don't you quickly talk about what we're doing, why we're here. Uh, so Plug and Play is a global startup accelerator. Um, we've made investments in companies like Lending Club, PayPal, Dropbox, etc. So if you think you need one of your projects uh, and get some traction and some ways to it, we'd love to bring you into one of our programs. Um, I run the FinTech program here. We've got IoT, Media and Mobile, and a few other programs as well. So happy to answer questions about that. Um, some quick background about what we're doing in Bitcoin. So uh, we've been holding a Silicon Valley Bitcoin meetup since about fall 2013. Uh, Roger passed that to me before he left the country. And you know, it was really uh, 
an awesome opportunity for me to just get involved in the space, get to know the community, and I met a lot of folks in this room here um, by way of that, that meetup. Um, we've had over 86 different speakers at that meetup, ranging from Charlie Schrem, who was in house arrest with this guy, uh, to Danny Brewster from EOB, we've had some pretty interesting characters. Um, like Edwin Moy and uh, other folks like that. So um, I urge you to join the Meetup group. It's the oldest running Bitcoin group in the world. Um, so it's just SV Bitcoin. Um, that'll be here again uh, second Tuesday of May. Um, this past week we just had Brad Templeton. Um, so we've also been running a Bitcoin accelerator program. Um, so we've actually accelerated six companies, a couple of which are in the room. Um, so BitWage with Jonathan and Pavilion with Jamie, um, we've now, and of course, uh, Jonathan, two seven points, sorry about that. Um, we've now opened up the overarching FinTech program, so we've partnered with Citibank, um, USAA, Intuit, Capital One, Allianz, and a few other folks. Yeah. So we'll be making a couple announcements in the next weeks to come. I invite you guys all to come uh, back here for our expo, and we'll be a culmination of that, uh, this current batch, with 29 companies in this batch, so May 21st, if you're in town, we'd love to have you come join us, and happy to get you a ticket. Um, Monday Club's founder and CEO will be speaking, so enough of the housekeeping. Um, Bitcoin Job Fair is kind of my baby. Um, I've been working with Dan Roseman from Coinality. It's now um, three times around the, the country, fourth will be this Saturday. Um, last year we had about 34 startups, about 400 people showed up. This year I think the number is a little bit lower, but higher quality companies that are hiring, better positions, things like that. Um, so I urge you guys to share the, share the, the word, um, bring your friends. Um, Biology for 21 will be speaking at 12 o'clock on Saturday, and we'll also have a few other folks speaking at the, the lunch break. So if you're wondering what's going on at 21, it's a great opportunity. In the evening, um, we'll have Paul and Mike, the authors of Age of Cryptocurrency. Um, so we'll be doing a quick discussion with uh, Pete Rizzo from Coindesk. At the end of that discussion, around 5 o'clock Saturday evening, we'll be um, announcing the winners. Um, so please stick around for that. And of course, uh, all the folks that are involved with this um, job fair are hired, so be sure to talk to the folks in these open positions. And uh, guys, please don't approach any of my startup talent. <laughs> um, apart from that, um, this, this has largely uh, you know, been organized by CCN, so I'd, I'd like to just quickly turn it over to Max uh, Wilson, um, who's uh, here on behalf of the Crypto College Network. And uh, yeah, just join me up here and give, give a quick overview of what you're doing and what people might expect for tomorrow. Okay. Well, um, I guess the job there is Scott's baby and uh, hacked on for mine. Uh, so I'm Max Wilson, uh, West Coast Regional Director of the College Cryptocurrency Network and uh, President of the Bitcoin Association of Berkeley. Um, so hackathons are, you know, exploding phenomenon, uh, bringing thousands of new developers, you know, into a space to hack, and develop uh, imaginatively and under pressure. And recently, uh, there's a new breed of hackathons, Bitcoin hackathons, and uh, we like to call them bit hacks. Uh, so last November. We, the Bitcoin Association of Berkeley, which is the Berkeley chapter of the College Crypto's uh, Currency Network, um, hosted the first collegiate Bitcoin hackathon ever in the world. And uh, we had about 140 participants. Uh, so incidentally, making it also the largest Bitcoin hackathon in the world. Um, that was Bay Area uh, developers. Now this bit hack, this weekend is slightly different. Uh, this is going to be, you know, open to the public. This is no longer limited to Bay Area residents. Um, this is being live streamed as well. Uh, and so, at the end of this opening ceremony, uh, hacking will begin. Uh, we have API sponsors uh, today here on site to help with any questions. Uh, those API sponsors are Shapeshift, BitGo, and ChangeTip. Um, and hacking will continue for the next. Like 66 hours, and we'll conclude at 12 p.m. on Saturday. Um, we're encouraging participants to show up at 9 o'clock uh, on Saturday morning, where again, uh, sponsors and mentors will be present, uh, offering assistance for any last minute issues. Um, what else? In the interim period, on Friday night, uh, we're opening up the doors of the D Lab at UC Berkeley. Uh, 
uh, the UC Berkeley campus. Uh, the D-Lab is where the Bitcoin Association of Berkeley was founded. And uh, again, we'll have mentors available uh, for assistance. Uh, we have a lot of students and early developers uh, who are extremely excited about this event. I will have food uh, and everything else as well. Um, rules for the event. Uh, number one, be excellent. Number two, uh, we will not accept any code accepted, uh, or sorry, produced uh, in any period of time outside of these 66 hours. Um, on top of that, uh, you know, teams of four uh, are permitted, anything more than that, and you know, we'll try to split you up. And uh, the most important thing is that we will not accept any sort of project that is turned in past the deadline on 12 p.m. on Saturday. We're using a online hackathon platform called Challenge Post. And uh, information about Challenge Post will be uploaded online uh, tonight via plug and play, uh, Twitter feed, and various other online sources. You know. uh, so, that, I think, yeah. is said enough about the event. Um, so, again, hacking. Begins after this. Uh, this is the future of money. Uh, the College Cryptocurrency Network, we like to say that we are leading on the blockchain generation, and all of you that are participating in this are a part of that. Um, so I'm very excited to see what you guys produce, and uh, let's get happy. So, yeah, again, all these submissions will be funneled through Challenge Post. Um, we'll set through 12 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. Saturday, April 18th. Um, we have a number of mentors and uh, folks from each of these teams here tonight, so I'm going to pass the baton over to the first team. I'll kind of give a quick overview of their offering, uh, where you can get more information and contact information as it relates to questions from the API. So um, please help me in introducing Ben um, from Bitcoin.
way. Um, hi everyone, my name is Benedict Chan and I lead the development platform at Bitco. So Bitco created uh, our first multi-sig wallet back in 2013 and um, at the time early on we first saw use cases in just storing bitcoins for high net worth individuals and enterprises but more recently we've um, been seeing some differentiation in terms of uh, processing multi-sig transactions using our automated code signer. And uh, we've been hard at work uh, you know, designing APIs and SDKs that many exchanges like Bitstamp uh, and ATM providers like Lamasu use to integrate uh, multi-sig security into their Bitcoin applications. So, so, okay. so actually, uh, I, myself, I love Hackathon, so in Hackathon spirit, I can guarantee you this is the last slide for today. I'm going to show you just demos from this point. Um, but for the basics, a multi-sig address um, is in, in Bitcoin an address that's associated with more than one private key. And the OP check multi-sig is supported natively on the blockchain, so that, uh, and it requires more than one key to spend funds. So Bitcoin implements a two or three multi-sig uh, model, where the user holds two keys and is in control of the funds, uh, with Bitcoin holding just one key. Typically, one of the user's keys gets designated as a backup key, and day-to-day -day transactions uh, you know, are performed by the user creating and half signing a transaction and then sending it to the cosign, where we can apply rules, policy, and callbacks uh, to verify the transaction before cosigning it on our end. And we've released a set of JavaScript and REST API SDKs to make it easy to manage uh, multi sig Bitcoin wallets and create multi sig Bitcoin wallets. So let's just drive right into the demo. So this is just, you know, no JavaScript. Um, and I'm going to copy and paste the login code in. I have the password, so I need to do this relatively quickly. Oh, um, <laughs> uh, yes, yeah, but that's okay. Uh, you know, we have OTP requirements as well. Okay, so and that access token that you just saw is only valid for now, so it's very, very, <laughs> very secure. Um, and now we are ready to get into business um, and create our wallet. Um, so. Create a wallet, all we just need to do is do bitgo.wallets, dot create wallet with keychains, and then give it a passphrase. So this passphrase is used to encrypt the uh, user key, which is created locally on this machine. Uh, give it a label as well. Um, oh, to resize this. Okay, yeah. Uh, then and then I'm giving it the backup XPUB, which we should generate in another machine. We won't be using this XPUB uh, today. It's just the last key in the 203 multi sig wallet. And then I'm going to say, you know, just let wallet equals to result of wallet. And that should create the wallet. So if things go well, and they did, uh, the wallet object is here. And so I can begin to do things like create addresses on my wallet. So Just do wallet.create address and when I do um, just want to view the output address. And so I have an address here, it's, it's actually a multi-sig address in uh, production Bitcoin because I, and you can see this because it starts with a three. Uh, and uh, I'm just gonna go over here to uh, blockchain.info and view this uh, address so that I can get the QR code and with this QR code I can send some money, some points into the wallet that we just created. So I'm going to just do that right now. Okay, I'm going to send a few bucks in. And it should hit two. Okay, yeah, so that's a transaction there. So back to the demo, um, if you want to get transactions on the wallet, uh, just do wallet.transactions. Then view the result. And it's showing you the transaction over here. And if you want to go into more detail, you can uh, look at that by looking at the first transaction. You can see the number of satoshis here. It's uh, actually going to be 
0 0.01 bitcoins and just got sent to this wallet. Um, so that's all good. Now what we're going to do with the money, we want to manage it. We, you know, our wallet cases are create a wallet, get addresses, receive the money, and then send the coins out. So we're going to send the coins out. Uh, before that, um, the cosigner is going to require that we provide it with an OTP. Um, and this is just to make sure that confirm that we want to send the transaction out and that it proves that we are who we say we are. So I'm unlocking uh, the account. And then to send funds, all I need to do is do the wallet dot send points, is the address. And I'm just going to pick some address up here. And then I needed to give it the wallet passphrase so that uh, it can decrypt the key locally. And I want to print out whatever comes out of this, just in case I make any mistakes. Okay, we're going to wait for a while. Okay, there it is. So um, I'll explain a little bit later on what just happened. But the transaction has already gone out to the Bitcoin network. And if you look at it here, <coughs> oh, you can see that it's already hit the blockchain. So that's uh, pretty much a wallet demo for you. Uh, it's really easy and simple to use, as you can see, and I encourage you to use it and hack on top of it. So going back to the next stage. Um, so I've also got something else to show you. It's called a hackathon startup, and what that is is a uh, quick boilerplate app for you guys to get started on the hackathon right away. So uh, I'm going to prove to you that there's nothing under the sleeves here. There's empty directory, and uh, I'm going to clone the hackathon startup code. And where is where is that? Ah, uh, here. Okay. So it's a boilerplate app which contains all the basic service code. Uh, typically at hackathons, you know, you're gonna make an app and you need some service which has logic uh, and you <coughs> and uh, you know makes it easy for you to integrate with whatever you want to integrate. Might, might it be you know, Facebook or Change Tip or any any particular API. So um, I've just cloned it and I'm gonna CD into that. And then all you need to do is npm install, and this is going to take a while, so while we do that, let me explain to you what happened just now during this wallet demo. So we did send coins. Um, what actually happened was that we provided with the wallet passphrase, and so just locally on this machine, the uh, passphrase was used to decrypt the keychain, which was part of the 203 Mohasic wallet, and locally uh, create and sign, half sign the transaction. Um, and then the key was never sent out of the machine, um, but it was the, the transaction was so the transaction was sent to BitGo, where our co-signer looked at it and uh, ran a set of basic rules. In this case, it was just OTP check, and then sent it out to the uh, blockchain after it was approved. So this is almost done. Okay, it's done. So Hackathon Starter is really easy to set up. Uh, you don't even need to change any config file. Just run the node app uh, after this point. Over here, okay, and then it's listening already on port 3000. Uh, and so if we go to localhost 3000, um, then you can see uh, the app which comes with it. So I guess the comes with a templating system for you as well. And it comes with, you know, all logins into pre-integrated, so you don't have to waste time with all this. Uh, you know, Facebook, Twitter, Google, GitHub, LinkedIn, and Whatever. And it also comes with a large number of API examples. So these examples are all world examples. If you click on them, um, you'll be able to, uh, you know, please just connect and do stuff with that. For example, this one, you see, uh, it has the code uh, in just a few lines, and it just displays the information. So with BitGo, we just recently got ourselves on Twitter, we just integrated with it, and it integrates the full uh, Bitcoin wallet. Um, so it has, you know, pretty much whatever I just demoed. Uh, it creates a wallet for you and it shows the information here. Uh, it creates a receive address, which you can then uh, use to deposit, and then it shows you all the transactions, which is empty because this is a new wallet. And then you can even send coins from the wallet. So it's a nice starting point, and all the code examples are there for you. Uh, 
that's pretty uh, much, yeah? So how to send coins, uh, how to get coins for this network? Oh, right, so, so just, uh, um, there was a big bet, uh -huh. um, but uh, so what it is is, the balance is zero. Right, so the balance is, is well, this one is my other account, but uh, there's a testnet faucet here, uh -huh. and it's under the link. So, I see. Um, or you can just search for testnet faucet. Uh, We're also happy to send Yeah, coins. yeah, we can give you points, test net points, plenty of points. And um, these are the resources that you can use uh, our wallet and blockchain data API, bitgo.com slash API. You can check out my media post for the ideas in the hackathon style code. And if you need any help during this hackathon period, please do email us at hackathonhelp at bitgo.com. I'll also be around here to uh, help answer any questions or
friction with Nick Zabo actually talks a lot about micropayments and how it didn't quite get there. And the biggest reason why he says it's not is it's not the necessarily just the friction around payments from the traditional vectors of cost, time, but it's the third one, which is cognitive load. We're not willing to put that much work into something for a very small amount of money. When we see that donate with PayPal button off to the side of the screen, we don't not click on it because we're cheap. It's because we're lazy. We just do the mental math and think through like, ah, I have to go outside, break my flow, what's my username and password again, and is it hooked up to the right bank account? And then it's already too much work. It interrupts the blog post that we were trying to read or the YouTube video that we were watching. But if there was a one click button alongside our favorite content, I think that we'll start to see that as we reduce friction around payments to such a low level, we'll inspire a new slew of human behaviors. And so that's what we're actually building. And we're really excited if you guys could help us build applications. Um, uh, we have been working furiously over the last few days, weeks, to get this IP API ready. Um, Jim is actually still kind of writing documentation right now. He's been <laughs> finishing some of the pieces. Um, uh, our team has, already, is, has been working really hard on this. We're really excited to be able to have you help. Um, David already reached out. He's got an idea. Um, I've got a few ideas. Uh, the APIs that, they, that I don't have anything to demo, but um, some of the, the things that have already been built with our API, um, we recently launched on Twitch, and Twitch actually was a community developed project. Someone came to us and said, I really want to build something. So we gave him a, a, a crude API endpoint and a lot of support, and he did all the work to get uh, tipping working on Twitch. Um, if anybody's using Slack, there's a, there's a Slack integration that actually I built over Christmas break, but I built it using uh, using our API, so this was all external. Uh, there's another company called Love Stamp, who has done this really cool thing with uh, a 3D printed stamp that's conductive material, and based on where the sensors are on the, the stamp, it actually simulates a distinct finger press on the phone, so it's a unique signature on the phone. So they use that to replace the idea or the notion of your traditional uh, buy 12 bagels, get the 13th for free in a, in a retail store, so that they stamp that, that, you, that you did that, it goes on the phone. And then they're using us as a loyalty and rewards program to tip their customers. So that's another thing that's been built on top of our API. It's all kinds of interesting ideas. We're willing to explore a bunch of others. I'm actually going to be building one. It's cool. Um, and we added some additional prizes to what the, the prizes that Scott mentioned earlier. The first team, the first place team, up to four, we're going to be giving away uh, the really cool Beats by Dr. Dre headphones, the, the really expensive, the, the best one, the best headphones you can buy. So there's four of those. Uh, the, the second one, the second prize is a jawbone wristband. It's a wearable for measuring health. Uh, I think it's kind of like a Fitbit, but it's, it's actually made by Jawbone, and it's, it's all about uh, wearable health. And then the third consolation prize is actually kind of a surprise, um, but it's, it's, it's fun as well. Uh, we want to be the fun company in Bitcoin, so we'd really like to help you guys out build something cool. Let me know. So, actually, Jim and I will be there. Jim and I will be there uh, tonight and at Berkeley tomorrow. There's going to be a few other exchange tickers in Berkeley, um, and then we'll be here Saturday uh, as well. Um, Changetip.com slash API to get started, and let us know if you have any questions. Okay, so well, last but not least, we have two gentlemen, uh, John and John from Shapeship. So, um, do you guys need a connection or anything? Or yeah, I'll connect them there. So yeah, please help me welcome John.
So it's really meant for things like this. Um, it's meant for people to build on top of it. It's meant to be integrated into other things. We've really never had our aims for Shapeshift itself, the website, to be a huge thing, although it's, it's gotten pretty big the last couple months, which is awesome. But really, in the long run, what we want and what we expect is for other people to build on top of it. That's really its use case, and that's really what we hope for. So it's really cool to be at something like this, where that's the goal, to see what other people might be able to come up with. So um, the purpose, um, instant coin conversion, different uh, conversions between different types of cryptocurrencies, as quickly as we can do it. That's always been kind of the goal. Uh, this little snippet right here is actually from our API. And this is about what you can generally expect from looking at our API documentation. We try to be as simple and as straightforward as possible. We're not trying, it's not a very big API, and that's on purpose. We, we do a couple things, we try to do them well, and try to make it easy for people to use it. Um, so the goals of it, um, like I said, simple, straightforward, as powerful as we can in terms of letting people convert from one coin to another as quickly as they can. Um, you know, to some degree, there's just the exchangeability of it, but I've always viewed Shapeshift as an engine for more or less different blockchains to talk to each other. Whenever you're sending value from one to another, it's, it's a way for those blockchains to interact and talk. It doesn't just have to be viewed as transfer of value, it's also transfer of information. Um, most businesses should not have to manage more than a few wallets. If people are getting into cryptocurrency, and some of our other members just walked in, here um, there's no reason um, that most companies ever should have to manage 20 different cryptocurrency wallets. And as a company that one of our primary things is dealing with all these different altcoin wallets, I'll tell you it's a nightmare. Um, you don't want to do it if you don't have to. So let us do it for you. Um, basic API functions that you're going to see when you look at our documentation. Getting rates, getting deposit limits, getting the recent transaction list. Um, all of this would be great for building any kind of stat tracking or graphs with our system. It's actually something we've been meaning to do for a long time, but just haven't gotten around to it yet. But I would love if someone else did it before us. That's kind of our general philosophy at Shapeshift. We have all these great ideas, but we're always like, we'd love if someone else would do this instead of us. <laughs> it's, already, it's already there, it could be built. We don't really have time to do it. If someone else would do it, that'd be great. Um, um, I'll keep just sort of going through here. Some more basic API functions, you can get the status of the deposit address. <coughs> the deposit address is something we'll generate when you um, create what we call a shapeshift conduit, which is just a link between two different addresses on two different blockchains. So once you create that link, we're either looking for a deposit, we've got your deposit and we're waiting for an exchange, or it's complete. Those are really the only three options. Or I guess the fourth option would be error. Yeah. <laughs> you don't want to see that one, but it does happen sometimes. Um, and then we also have time left on fixed amount transactions, because we have two different types of main transactions. And I'll sort of just go right into that, actually. We have a normal transaction, which is basically just the link between the conduits. And that can be reused as many times as you want. So once you create a conduit with Shapeshift, you don't necessarily have to create another one. You can send to that address as many times as you want, and it'll convert to that coin you chose every single time. You just keep sending. Um, fixed amount transactions are a little bit different, though. Those are more designed with things like uh, payment processing in mind, which means that we need to lock in a specific price and the user needs to get a specific amount out at the other end. So that's only good for a certain amount of time and it's only meant to be used once. We don't want to use fixed amount transactions more than once. They won't work and you and the system will both be unhappy. Um, there's a lot of use cases for these different things. Um, a number of ones people are already working on that I'm aware of, so multi-currency wallets. Um, there's a couple of those I know that are being worked on that are coming out, but there's a lot of room for innovation there. Um, different types of merchant processing, allowing merchants who already accept Bitcoin to accept all sorts of coins. If they already accept Bitcoin, there's no reason to add any extra infrastructure. Um, and a lot of other ideas, like I said, that we have in, our, in the back of our head that we're just waiting for people to do. Um, one of the examples we'd like to show, and I'm going to let John here take it in a second to show you a little bit around it, is uh, we created this little tool called the Shapeshift Lens. And this is just us using our own API um, to create a little tool. So what it basically does is it'll take any Bitcoin address on the internet, put our, put our little Fox logo next to it, and if you click it, you can then select from any of the coins we support, 
and pay that Bitcoin address with any other, other coins we support. Just instantly, quickly. Um, all of that code is open source. So um, I'm going to let John show you around that a little bit because it's a great example of how we used our API, and I think it's a great example of code for other people might want to use the API. I want to show that. So John's going to pull this up. Okay. If it works. So, uh, actually, I'm going to start. I'll switch the page. I'll show you the very first thing we have up here is the API button. Um, in the uh, happy doll guide, it's the printed out of this page pretty much. <laughs> um, so, you have it with you, but there's also all our documentation to the real website. And actually, uh, our main page, as John said, is it just uses our API. So if you <coughs> want to pull down the main.js uh, <coughs> file from this site, we give you it's, it's not minified or anything, so you can actually just pop on there, see how we're, we're using our own API. Uh, that's actually probably I mean, you get an entire site full of the little pieces, so it's not as easy to look through as the lens, which I'm going to show you in a second here. But um, it is, if you wanted to use it the way we, the way our main site works, just look at the main site. Um, yeah, let's go to get it. So if you go to GitHub and just search for shapeshift, it's about halfway down, there's a bunch of other shapeshift things. But, and actually some, uh, if you need a Node.js implementation, I saw one on here today when I was looking for this, so. <laughs> um, so our, the lens that we just showed you a minute ago is actually just a shapeshift publish slash shapeshift lens. Um, so if you just pull that up, about halfway down, pictures, there's a lens.js file. And then the pertinent stuff is down here on line like 260. Yeah. So when you click the, once you've gotten rates, which also is good, is how to get the rates and limits and things like that. Uh, which I'm not going to show you right now, but just all the, when you actually got that, you click the button to start your transaction. Uh, it's this code right here, and all it does is set up a object with the withdrawal address and the pair. That's all you actually need. You can add in, there's extra optional fields and it'll change how the transaction works if you add some of these extra fields that you can read about in the API documentation. So the withdrawal address and the pair is all that's needed. And then all you gotta do is a post request that data to our site's API. So shapeshift.io slash and then with whichever endpoint you're trying to hit uh, with the post data. And that should be all you need to actually create the transaction before you send the money. So some money that can really happen. But, uh, yeah, so like John said earlier, we try to make this as simple and elegant as possible. Uh, and we think we've achieved that fairly well. There's always room for always improvement. And 
we've got lists of probably 30 different API requests from people to do really interesting things, which we'll get to someday. We're still, we're getting to, but it's just so much different. Um, yeah, so is there anything else? That no, I think that's, that's good, it's kind of a little overview. And then the last thing. We'll be here all weekend, so ask us lots of questions. It'll be fun. So that's the lens. And then uh, other resources, like John said, will be here through the hackathon. So feel free to talk to us or reach out to us. We're happy to answer questions. If you even have a simple API request, we may even be able to hack it together for you pretty quick and get it up there. We've already had one that reached out to us um, a couple days ago with an idea that we've been working on. Um, that we might have up by tomorrow if we're lucky. Um, the other thing is we also have this API area in, in addition to our API documentation. This is kind of cool. You can get to this from our website. There's a link, but this is the actual direct link. And it's kind of cool because it, it lets you, sh it shows you in a bunch of different code styles, whatever you're using, PHP, Node, JavaScript, whatever you're using, it'll show you an example of how that call works in that type of code. So it's really cool uh, depending on what you're using. And then these are both of our emails, so feel free to reach out to us if you can't find us, and we'll get back to you quick. Thanks, guys. All right, well, with that, um, you should all have the contact information for each of the three API teams. Uh, special thanks to Maps and, of course, our three API sponsors. Um, we're going to open it up, so let's get hacking. So thank you all for watching on here on YouTube, and uh, we'll see you guys Saturday. Bye. And uh, pizza and stuff just came, so please help yourself. There's pizza, beers, and all sorts of stuff in the back.